Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a long time coming, but we're here now. Welcome to the season finale, part one of A2K. Cue the intro. What's up, y'all? It's David Gibbons, your friendly neighborhood singer-songwriter, here for the first part of the season finale of a 2K, also known as America to Korea. And this one's actually going to be a doubleheader because I'm going to be doing the previous episode. Before we get started, go give me a thumbs up. Go ahead and smash the subby and ring the bell for more videos, as well as... Oh gosh, I'm gonna save this for later because it's really exciting for me. Save this later on. So, let's get into the video. All right, so before we get started, I wanna go ahead and say this. I wanna go say thank you um, for everyone who's been watching these videos. I don't do long form content like this and I really don't talk this much on camera but I've been getting such great feedback about doing these reviews. And I just want to say thank you like so much for being so supportive, responsive to me even doing videos on, say, you know, ATK, um, doing reviews for almost every single episode. I want to say that. Thank you so, so, so much. Um, it's really getting me out of my, my shell, really boosting up my confidence a little bit, talking more, doing a little bit more research, um, really diving into new, a new format that I don't normally do. Um, so I want to say thank you so, so much for everyone who's been super supportive, um, throughout these last couple of weeks doing these videos, talking about this amazing series, um, really rooting for all these girls, really exploring more into the K-pop industry um, outside of what I already knew. Um, this, this has been an experience. And if you guys have any suggestions, if y'all have any suggestions of any music-related videos, topics, anything y'all want to talk about for me in this channel outside of me doing my own stuff, let me know in the comments because I want to do more of these. See, like doing this has been really, really fun. Doing this has been amazing. And it sucks that it's going to end um, very soon. Um, on Monday, it's going to end. And we'll find out who... Um, it's going to be part of the group who's going to be, you know, that team we're going to be rooting for for the next 10 plus years, you know. Um, so I really want to do more long for um, content with y'all, if you allow me to. I think the next video that I'm doing is actually I'm going to be listening to Renaissance for the first time. It's, this will be my first Beyonce album I've ever listened to. So, I'm going to listen to Renaissance um, as part of the next video. But I hope you guys stay around for that. Um, and there's another announcement later on after this video is done. But I really want to go ahead and take a pause and just say thank you to every single person who has commented, every single person who has given me feedback, both negative and positive. Um, people who have actually... Um, seeing my point of view and people who actually showed me their point of view. So I want to say thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, it really makes me feel like um, I'm being seen, I'm being heard and all that jazz. Okay, so that's my spill. That's my little sappy moment, but for real, let's... Okay, so we are starting off the episode with the remainder of the interviews so that leaves Kendall and 
Kaylee, and then that leaves all of Team A as a trio. And I'm going to be very, very honest. I feel like they're gunning for my girl. They're gunning for my girl, uh, Kendall. They're gunning for my girl. Um, I I know that this is a per, um, about to be... This episode is very short. Episode um, 12 is very short. Um, but I do feel like coming up the gate swinging with Kendall, like, you are not... No one voted for you. I'm like, dang, like, did you have to say that? But I understand that that's preparing her for interviewers who are going to be very, very, very um, critical, very um, harsh, kind of trying to draw out some kind of emotion, some kind of reaction. Um, but dang, I was like, ooh. Um, I didn't. I didn't personally like that part. I'm, I'm like, I was like, mm. I may not have seen her as part of the group, but I personally feel like that question right there and revealing that information was a little bit too far, but that's just me. That's just my personal feelings. I just didn't, I didn't like that part. I feel like, mm, that's a violation to me. That's you violating because now you kind of shaking her a little bit and mm, I don't know. That's that's me. That's me. Um, I I, I kind of saw it on her face, and it may be just the editing. It it may be just the editing of it all, but I I saw it on her face that she that whole dialogue was mm, that was not. But I get it because, you know, you have to be prepared for, you know, really tough reporters who violate <laughs> asking very inappropriate questions, asking questions that kind of hurt. Um, and I kind of was like, hey, did you have to tell her that she was last? Because now that kind of like shook my head, shaking up her confidence a little bit. Like, I'd be like, mm. I didn't quite like that question. That's not a question that she would start off with. Um, just, I didn't quite like it. Um, but I understood. <laughs> I understood um, why it might have had to happen. Um, but I'm glad that she, you know, had some composure. She answered the question gracefully but you could see it on her face that she was she was a little bit hurt she was hurt by that and then they showed some clips the, you know the clips you know they do normally show they showed like the clips of her kind of being by herself a bit just being just being by herself a little bit like being kind of tunnel vision and we all have it all happens like when you have a mission when you have like a goal that you're trying to achieve you you tend to be tunnel vision. You tend to to focus on yourself. And mm, I feel bad. I kind of feel I kind of feel bad. But I know she's she's a sweetheart. I know that based on what I have what is presented to me on screen, she's she's a sweetheart. She's she's got a creative spirit. Um I don't think that she's trying to isolate just to isolate. I think she's just in your own head and it happens. It happens to me all the time. I can't tell you how many times. But I I, I particularly did not... I don't think that she's the least favorite. I just think that she needs more time to actually build a relationship with the other girls. But I think their relationship is really good. I think everyone's relationship is in this group is is very good. It's a very good group of girls. Um Kaylee, Kaylee's question was basically you know, does she have a passion, you know, her competitiveness. Um and I get it. I get her I I get it. I get, you know, the competitiveness. Um I think that was an appropriate question to ask. My one worry, and we'll get to it later on in this episode when we talk about the next the start of the season finale the final practices 
um, my one worry is she's really hard on herself, like super hard. Um, and you can hear it in her questioning, her answering of the questions, what she ta- what she talks about, you know, like, you know, I'm not worried about everyone else. I'm worried about me. And I'm like, that's not a good space to be in. <laughs> It's, it's not a good space being. I think a lot of the issues that you're seeing with the girls, honestly, it's everybody's in their own heads. And it's a thing with performers and artists and creatives. We get in our own way so much and we don't give ourselves grace, especially when you're in a, in a place where it's like it is a competition and you're trying to claim a spot. So it's super, super hard to not be in your head in those kind of stressful situations. I, I I feel for Kaylee. I I get it. And and I know people are like, you've been super hard. I'm not been hard. I've been critical, but I haven't been hard on her. Like if I wanted to be hard, I could, but I feel for her. I feel for her because even just watching the next episode, um, which we'll be talking about soon, you see that a lot of things that I've said in terms of not feeling, she had just started not being ready, ready. Not being ready, it's coming up. It's It's coming up. I think she's a great asset. I think that's, that, that Kaylee is an amazing, amazing, amazing um, potential. I would like to see her stick with JYP, get trained a week a lot more, and really build up confidence within herself. Because um, it is a lot, a lot of times, if you're in your own head, it happens. So just giving her that space and that time to actually learn herself give herself some grace, understand, yes, you are doing the thing. You are doing the thing that millions of girls and even boys want to do. And it is stressful. It is hard. It is something that you're going to get critiqued on it a lot, but it takes time. Don't beat yourself up over the smallest, over the smallest mistakes. Like, don't think that you showing your emotions is a weak thing. You're not being weak. You really care. I feel like with Kaylee, she cares a lot about what she's trying to present because she wants to present it in a way that's up to the standards of everybody else. And I appreciate that. I I feel like that's having quality control, making sure like, oh, I don't like this. I don't like this. Um, I was just watching a video of Beyonce doing that for all her tours like she she knows oh this is a feel right I don't like this I don't like this let's change that up let's do this better I'm the same way I'm very like when it comes to my music when it comes to the looks the sound how everything's supposed to be I am very particular so to see another young young artist like "Mm -mm, it doesn't feel right within me I want to get this right understand I understand completely but just don't let it consume you. Don't let it beat you down in within your own hell, within your own head, per se. All of us have gone through it. You're not alone, girl. <laughs> You're not alone. Now, the one thing I do appreciate for her, I do love about Kaylee, outside of, you know, what I just said is she is a bubbly girl. She's like, she's the fun one. She's the one like, she's the fun girl. She's like, listen, I'm a make you, I'll make you feel, feel great. Like we're going to have fun. We're going to have fun. We're going to bounce around. We're going to be like super on sugar. Like she's very hyper. She's very sweet. If I had to give this child a nickname, I'm calling her bubbles. Yes. Bubbles. Like, power up of girls, Bubbles. She is the joy and the laugh. Yes, that's Bubbles. <laughs> and that's Kaylee. Kaylee is Bubbles. She is cool, fun, interesting. I 
love seeing like sh- the personality side of it. She's amazing. She's she's the fun girl. That's the girl you want in the group. You want the fun girl. <laughs> I know that's so hard, but yeah, she's the fun girl. Keep the fun girl in groups. You always need a fun girl. I I say always say like my favorite girl group members are, you know, Perry Edwards, um, Leanne Pinnock. Um, I love someone like a Kelly Rowland because they're the fun girls. They're the girls who are like they're the bubbly personalities. They are always going to bring laughter, joy within a room, and everybody knows it and sees it. So next up is the trio, Team A, the vocal team. That is Camilla. That is Christina and KG. And this interview really showcased to me if if all of us falls through, if all of us falls through, those three could be a group together. Like seeing the sisterhood, seeing the unity, seeing the professionalism in the answering of their questions, especially with KG. Like it was so professional. It was so like they were bouncing, you know, responses among each other, showing affection, um, really, you know, interacting with the interviewer. They weren't being super nervous. They were really like communicating and doing an interview interview. And I love to see it. Like you see, like the dynamic was so different from all the other interviews uh, for the past two episodes. So different, so distinct. Um, I love, you know, the interaction with Christina and KG. I love, you know, Camilla's, you know, shock and really showing an emotion in the interview. And those are the kind of interviews that you want. You really want those, you really want those kind of interactions with your interviewer because it shows them like you're not a cookie cutter. It shows them that you're human. It shows them that you can be, you know, You can really interact with the people, your audience. It shows them that you are genuine. And to me, this was one of the best interviews of the entire two episodes of Star Quality Evaluations. Hands down. All the other ones that were super nervous, they were like, um, like, didn't show... They showed personality, but not as much personality, not as much, you know, camaraderie as this one. I'm I'm giving it to all three of these girls, gold stars across the board. Um, they did an amazing job on these interviews. I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. I, I have nothing more to say about Team A inner star quality wise, because they already proven oh, I can sit down and talk and show, you know, love and sister to my, to my fellow group members as well as people outside of the group. And so, yeah, love that. Anyway, so after the evaluations, we have the rankings. And I told y'all, I told y'all who was getting in group. I told y'all Camilla was going to get in and I I told y'all she was getting in. So she is the first one to be set to go to Korea to be part of the group to train and we got herself a vocal powerhouse everybody and yeah she earned that. She earned it. So super super proud super ecstatic for her and can't wait to see who else joins her to go overseas to be part of this amazing cross-continental group um i still want to know what the name is going to be for this group it's it's not it can't be a2k i don't think that's a really good name (laughs) that's just me I, I personally feel like A2K is not, uh, not a great name for this group. But congrats to Camilla. Yeah, pff, she earned it. <laughs> that was an earn. All right, so now we are on episode 
13, the first part of the season finale. And I'm going to go ahead and get that, pull the bandage off right now because I know I'm going to get a lot of hate and a lot of <laughs> negative comments because what I'm about to say is going to reiterate what I've been saying for a minute. And I don't think, I don't think Kaylee is ready right now, right now. I don't think she's ready. I think, and again, I may, I might be wrong. I, she may be in, in the final lineup. I might be wrong, but as I don't think she's ready right now. I think that she's getting there. She's getting there, but she is in her head. She's in her head. She's in her head. And when you're in your head, trying to make it perfect, instead of just, okay, go with the flow and be technical about it. It messes you up. And I'm saying this as someone who suffers from that. I know what it feels like. I know what it looks like. Um, it it sucks. <laughs> it sucks um, because if it's not right, you get frustrated. If it's not right. Um, you you tend to overcorrect or you tend to feel like why can I get this and you start beating yourself up and when you're in spaces where it's a competition and it's it's and you you're trying to you're trying to claim a spot it's real horrible and it's real intense um but i do uh, i do appreciate what the instructor said to her and giving her some encouragement because she is so young so so young and at and at that age we tend to feel like man this is super hard or i don't know if i can do it and she can do this but i don't think right now it's for her. It's not. It's not for her right now. It's not the timing. But again, I could be wrong. Um, I just. I just really feel like she's not. She's almost there. She's not there yet, but she's almost there. Give her. Give her another two, three years. I know she's probably fourteen at the time, but give her another two years, and I bet you, without a shadow of a doubt, she's gonna be the biggest star of this generation I bet you if you just give her two more years I bet you she will be the biggest star on this planet if you just give her that time to just cook <laughs> give her the time to cook let her cook uh, with that being said team A the vocal team who are doing uh, Be My Baby, which is the most difficult K-pop song to sing and dance from the second generation with my girls, the Wonder Girls. Um, it is a difficult song. And the fact that all three ladies just from the practice shots alone did well. KG, your girl... Your, your dancing has improved, my dom. Your dancing has improved. Um, is it is it up is it up to standard quite yet? No, but it's better than what it was. <laughs> um, Christina, you vocals, you getting it, girl. You getting it. I can't wait to see this final performance, but I can hear some vocals. The vocals are vocaling. Camilla, well rounder. She already in, so she's chilling at this point. But you can hear that she's being super supportive of her team, of her group, and that's what you want to see from a girl group. That's what you want to see. You want to see supportive people. 
you want to see your other members win because when they win, you win. Smart woman, smart woman. So team, I think this is team B. This is the wannabe team. And, oh no, this is the feels. I'm sorry, this is team, team C. So that's Gina and everyone else. I can tell that some of them were nervous by a lot. Um, some of them were dealing with some nerves. Some of them felt a little discouraged because they felt like they were the everything else team. I don't think they are the everything else team. I think they are the well-rounded team, which is a mixture of the vocalists and the dancers and then the visual people. I thought they did really, really well. Um, were there some spots that could be improved? Absolutely. And thank God for JYP actually coming in and actually, you know, helping them in each group, you know, kind of nail down their parts and nail down certain little nuances that are in the dance, certain little nuances within the vocals. Um, I... I honestly thought that one group he was not very happy with, but I definitely can hear, I can definitely see that, you know, these, the girls of group C, they're really good. They're really good. They're the ones that I, there are certain people in the group I was like, oh, this, this is really good from what I can see. Um, but I can tell that some of them felt a little discouraged. Um, yeah. But they were really good. Um, my f- now the one between that's team B. <sighs> they all did great. I feel like once certain people got out of their situations, they did amazing. Um, Kendall, Kendall struggled figuring out how to belt. I think what JYP was trying to get her to do is belt and so this is part where i'm going to be talking about belting so belting there's different different layers of your voice you know we have head voice which everything that's resonate from here um you have chest voice and then you have what i call like diaphragm or belly voice if you're a soul singer most of us sing from the belly um and i think what he was trying to do was get her to not falsetto it so falsetto if you don't know is that's a falsetto in a run but he wanted to go full voice which I'm not doing full voice because it's like 3am <laughs> me recording this full voice is mostly from it's mostly a chest area so chest voice so it's like you breathe air into the diaphragm and then you push up where most of the voice is resonating in the chest area and you basically punch the air. I call it punching the air. So you're basically like putting force of your voice in within the breath and pushing out. So Kendall, she would basically go into falsetto because there's not enough air, which I understand she's dancing. So dancing, if you're not really like really well versed in like hardcore Hip hop choreography dance, it takes your air is going to be used to supplement that. Um, it, it got thin somewhere when during her part, it got very, very thin. So he kept trying to do no falsetto, no falsetto. She, you could see that she was getting frustrated, and all he was asking for is girl belt. So for all those who don't, who are those who, you know, say like belting is yelling, there's a difference. Yelling, you're actually doing this to your vocal folds. So it's your vocal folds are very thin pieces of muscle. So with your vocal folds, when you yell, you're basically like slapping your voice, your vocal folds together like this, and it's resonating so rapidly, but it's being more abrasive. When you belt, when you belt, it is a clap of the, of the muscles, but then it's kind of like a wave because the air is kind of like making that those vocal folds vibrate a little bit more to create resonance. So with her, it's just basically like 
know why I'm using my speech pathology knowledge right now. <laughs> I'm in grad school for speech pathology. Um, so with her, it's like basically using the air to really project her voice more, really give it a sound, really make that sound sound more powerful and full instead of being very thin, airy. Like thin and airy is great for certain things. Like if you want to hit a whistle note, thin and airy is what, what you do. But if you're trying to belt, it needs to be full, needs to be hearty. It needs to be not super breathy, but like enough to where you can get that voice to project out. So hopefully she can get it together by final performance, but I'm not so sure. Um, the best situations to get a fuller voice while dancing start running or jogging and singing i've seen a lot of them walk and sing which is great but if you're doing like hardcore cardio not not cardio hardcore like um dancing and you have to sing as well jog run sing at the same time like just jog every day like two to five miles and sing a song full out. Like one thing that I do, cause I don't jog, I walk. I will sing my entire song while working out. Like I will go to the gym, get on the elliptical on a Friday when there's nobody there. Cause my gym is weird. They don't have anybody coming on a Friday. Um, I'll get on the elliptical and I would just sing my entire catalog on elliptical I would go on a treadmill and I would sing the fastest song I have because if I'm gonna if I want to dance then I have to be ready to dance I have to be ready to be able to sing and dance um if I'm lifting weights I'm singing <laughs> you ever see me like do like 400 like 200 pound squat like Lost the translation. It's, it's, it's hard. It's, it's hard, but you know what? It will make you better with breath control. How to use the breath, how to use the voice. And it will strengthen your core and your diaphragm at the same time. I cannot tell you how much better it feels to actually know. Like, you can actually get some abs from singing. Not as much, but still. <laughs> Well, as we get to the next day, we start to see the girls get ready for the performance of their life. And they brought in one of my favorite members from my favorite group, 2 p.m. <sighs> I, I'm a, listen, I'm from the second generation K pop, so that's 21. That's the Wonder Girls, Girls Generation. That is 2 p.m., 2 a.m., um, Super Junior Big Bang. Um, yeah, so I'm so happy that he's, you know, he's there to support the girl because he actually is from America. He's from Los Angeles, I believe. I believe he's from Los Angeles. If not, then shoot me. <laughs> um, but I'm so happy that, you know, the girls have someone that is going to be there watching them, judging them, and giving them advice how to move further on in their careers so yeah that's it well that's all i got for you today leave your thoughts in the comments below on today's episode go ahead and give me a thumbs up smash the subby and ring the bell for more videos and until next time see you around young warrior